Let's take a look now at the Oregon governor's race and a political action committee that's gotten a lot of attention in recent years, Timber Unity. You've probably seen their signs, especially in rural areas of Oregon. Or maybe you remember when they first came onto the scene in a big way back in 2019 with this log truck protest at the Oregon State Capitol. I was there. It was loud. Big rigs filled the roadways in a convoy to the Capitol and Timber Unity held a rally, all of it, to fight against the cap and trade bill, which died that year, although it came back years later. Timber Unity says they're a nonpartisan group. They say their aim is to protect natural resource jobs for working class people in rural Oregon. They've gotten a lot of support from Oregon Republicans who walked out and left the state to kill that cap and trade bill in 2019. Unaffiliated candidate for governor Betsy Johnson was an early supporter of Timber Unity. She comes from a timber family and has a large amount of wealth from timber. She's gotten thousands in campaign support from other timber organizations. She's gone to Timber Unity rallies, held signs, even got an award for one for her vote against that cap and trade. So you would think she'd be a shoe in for their endorsement, right? Well, when it came to endorsing a candidate for governor, something interesting happened. Timber Unity snubbed her. They decided to endorse Christine Drazen instead. She has also supported their efforts. Timber Unity announced that Drazen supports their values better than the other candidates for governor, especially when it comes to what they call checkbook issues like taxes, inflation, and housing affordability. They said they met with both Drazen and Johnson, but that they had concerns about Johnson's record, especially on taxes. We certainly appreciate Betsy Johnson and how she stood up with us for cap and trade. Um, but she has some pretty hard votes that she's taken as a Democrat senator, such as the corporate activity tax, the transportation tax. She voted to not give us our kicker refunds two times. It's just a full scope of checkbook items um, that was made it really difficult to support her in this race. So for our membership, keeping Oregon affordable and rescinding those tax votes and keeping us in our jobs and in our rural communities, um, we felt Christine Drazen would be the best choice for governor. In their announcement, they said Christine stands out as someone who truly listens and understands how the policies coming out of Salem impact family businesses and working people. She has a clear plan for ensuring that timber, agriculture and other natural resource industries are a growing part of our state's future, not just our past. Drazen said she appreciates their support and looks forward to working with them in the future. Betsy Johnson, for her part, said she had no comment. Timber Unity also said they've not yet met with Tina Kotek, but they'd be open to it. Now, remember, with three candidates in this race, one of them could win with less than 40 percent of the vote, a lot less if the race is as close as many projected to be. And the non-affiliated voters could end up being the ones who decide. Take a look at this. They're the largest block of registered voters in the state now, about 6,000 more non-affiliated voters than Democrats in Oregon as of August. Betsy Johnson could be the spoiler that takes votes from Kotek or Drazen, or she could have enough of her own support from both sides to win it all. We'll see how it all shakes out in November.